This is the DJI Phantom 4. In 2016, DJI released the Phantom 4, which was probably the most popular drone in the world. Drone pilots from all industries love this drone because of its ability to work with different types of projects. Whether that's videography or aerial mapping or inspection work, DJI would update and refine this drone every year. And in October of 2018, DJI released the Phantom 4 RTK. This drone changed the game for drone surveying and aerial mapping. By including an RTK enabled GNSS antenna, the Phantom 4 was able to collect high accuracy positioning on all of the imagery. This provides surveyors with higher accuracy raw data before they even start processing the imagery. And not only that, but the data that's collected from an RTK enabled drone means that it's less dependent on ground control points. Conventional drone surveying requires you to use a large amount of ground control points. These are points that are established using a GNSS receiver or a total station and require a high visibility target so that it can be viewed from up in the sky. Now with a consumer grade drone, you're looking at 10 to 15 ground control points for every 10 acres of mapping. But utilizing an RTK enabled drone, you can cut that number in half, maybe even less in larger sites. This is because the location of the images are being corrected using real-time kinematic, or RTK. Now, RTK is very popular in surveying with devices like this GNSS receiver. This receiver is observing its position utilizing the satellites that are in the sky. These satellites are broadcasting their position, and by utilizing several satellite positions, you're able to find the position of your receiver here on Earth. And in order to get real-time corrections for the position of this receiver, it either connects to a base station that's in a single location, or connects to the internet to a continuously operating reference system that is continuously broadcasting corrections to receivers. And so using these principles, we're able to get an RTK-enabled drone to find its position using satellites, and then connecting it to either the internet or a local base station to get real-time corrections and have high-accuracy positions on its images. Images. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Real quick before we start, I just want to thank our sponsor for today's video, E38 Survey Solutions. If you're looking to purchase survey grade equipment like drones and GNSS receivers, then you're definitely going to want to check out E38 Survey Solutions. They've got survey grade drones like the Phantom 4 RTK that I'm using, or if you're looking for the Auto Evo 2 RTK, they have that, as well as Inland GNSS receivers and much, much more. Check out E38 Survey Solutions, link in the description, and make sure you let them know that Rami sent you. So I'm going to be using the DJI Phantom 4 to survey my entire house and create a high accuracy aerial map. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is lay down cones for where our drone is going to take off and land in. Next, I'm going to place the drone down here in the middle, and now power on the drone. Now that the drone is on, let's take a look at the flight controller and set up our mission. After powering on my controller and my drone, the aircraft is connected and I can now start to plan my mission. So I'm going to click on plan. In plan, I have the option to pick between different types of flights, but I'm just going to pick 2D photogrammetry. And now you can see my house right here. The H is the home point, the arrow is the drone, and the little blue dot is us. By tapping here and now here, coming up to here and here, I've created the polygon that is our mission. If I tap on this little arrow right over here, I can start to set different parameters for our mission. I want the flying height to be just 60 meters, so I'll hit done. I want the speed of my drone to be 4 meters per second. Shooting mode, I can set it to timed or distance, I'll just leave it at timed. And then I want the drone to return to home when it's done. Under advanced settings, I can change the horizontal overlap or the vertical overlap. I'm going to change my horizontal overlap to be 80%, just like my vertical. And I'm going to set the margins to, mm, let's just say, 5 meters. And actually, when I look at this, I think I'm actually going to drop the flying height a little bit more. Yeah, let's do 30 meters. 30 meters is roughly 100 feet above the ground, a little more than 100 feet above the ground. Great, and now I'm going to hit save. I'm going to name this project Home RTK. Done, and confirm. Now you're probably wondering, how can I connect my drone to get RTK corrections? If we click on the three dots up at the top, you're going to notice that your drone has a menu that says RTK. You tap on that, and you can now input information for RTK positioning. 
The first one is aircraft RTK positioning. You're gonna to wanna to enable that. Next, it's gonna ask you if you wanna maintain positional RTK mode. This basically means that the drone will stop in the middle of the sky if it doesn't have an RTK lock. I'm gonna ignore that for now. That might be useful for larger projects. And then the RTK service type. If you pull this down, you have two options. You have the DRTK2 mobile station, which is DJI's proprietary RTK base station that you can purchase separately. Or you can use a custom network RTK to connect to either your own base station or the cores network. So I'm going to pick custom network RTK because I want to connect to the cores network. Now if you don't know what the cores network is or how to set up an account, wait till the end of the video. I'm going to explain everything that you need to know about the cores network. Okay, here we've got the Entrip host. I'm going to put in my IP address. So here in the state of Michigan, it's going to be 148.149.0.87. Next. Here I'm going to put the port number, which is 10001. Next. This will be my username. So it's just, I picked my name, so I'm just going to put my name. Next, here I'll input my password. Okay, next. Finally, I'm gonna put the mounting point, and for me, it's going to just be nearest underscore RTCM3 dash GG. Done. And I'm going to hit connect. And you can take a look down here. Our position is fixed. These are all the satellites we're observing from the American to the Chinese, the Russian and the European satellites. We have our standard deviations. And yeah, everything looks good. If I hit X, now it says ready to go RTK. All right, now that we're done, we can upload everything to the drone and take off. I'll hit invoke, start, make sure all the precautions are met and slide to execute. Little speck in the sky collecting data. And there's the drone flying its path. Here's a live view. And the whole time the drone is in RTK mode. And that's it, that's how you fly a drone using RTK. Now if you're a beginner and you wanna learn more about drone surveying, check out this video up here. If you wanna learn more about the cores network and how you can set up an account, check out this video down here.